Hey guys, myself is Sean and I'm going to take you for the... Hey guys, this is Sean Gaur, uh, also known as i7HVN. Um, so today I'll be taking over the live and kick-in and I'll be breaking down a track which I'm kind of uh, in the process of making right now. Uh, it's not finished, but yeah, and I'll be taking on how I select my samples, how I design my sounds and what is the theme behind most of my tracks and yep that's about it so let's jump into it. So as you can see on the screen right now I have a lot of groups uh, which are just um, bus channels and it has a lot of different instruments so I like to keep uh, my groups uh, organized so I haven't named them yet but you can see that there's a group for pads and stuff. There's a group for just bases. There's a group for FX, a group for hats, and a group for kick and the sub bass. So that's how I like to uh, arrange my thing. Also, you can see that I have already put this into a scene mode where I can understand that what is the first part of my track which starts from here. And going down, um, it comes to the part where it's having the draw breakdowns and all those stuff. And if you go down to the bottom, this can be the in outro. So this helps me to arrange my tracks easily. Right, let's jump into the kicks first. So, so this is how the kick actually sounded. It's a very soft kind of kick. So with the drum bus, I added a bit of boom, drive, a bit of transients and a crunch. And also I took down the driver to 70%. That's like where I thought that this sounds pretty well. Now with the kick, uh, I had cut down my highs, which I don't really like in my kicks. So I don't like my kicks to be clicky. I want them to be punchy or thumpy kind of a kick not really clicky right you can see I just boosted the root uh, base part of the um, kick over here after which I've added a compressor so that it's slightly compressed and everything seems to be on point over here and finally a utility which is for the mono right so coming to the next element which is the sub bass so the sub bass I usually make my sub basses on with a kick only so it's the same kick which I'm using but with a I mean the start point of the kick is a bit different from which actually was so I lose the transient so I am just uh, remain with this sort of a sound and there is a click which I tried to fade out fade in actually in the beginning but I can take care of it with the help of auto filter later so let's check it out now with the help of this drum bus I tried to make it more amp like more overdriven kind of a sound and then I took out all those things which I don't need with the help of auto filter. And I'm compressing, but this is actually side chaining to the kick. And finally, the utility. So let's play. And this is how it sounds the kick and bass together. And there's a slight glue compression happening over here so that they both kind of sticks with each other well right the ele other elements which I have in my um, thing is one of it is a weird hat which is made out of this kind of a sound so it sounds like a wooden hat kind of thing I, I like to work around um, 
some different kinds of samples not really just using a hat for a hat so that it gets the texture of something else as well and i usually layer them down with the actual hats as well right so adding a drum bus again to add a bit of transient to this and drive also the drive it is really low just to my liking then i took down the highs of this again a drum bus to enhance the transients over here this part now because the transients were really deciding on um, the highs over here and finally an utility to have the width and the pan for this uh 16 uh one by 16th pattern of hi hat rolling hi hat right just some simple stuff on this an offbeat hat now this is the hat where you get a bit more normal kind of hat which has more of the highs Now this is more like a tribal percussion kind of a sound. So again, uh, this was a wood kind of a sound. Let's hear it, solo it and check it out. Right, so that was the sound. Uh, just did like a bit of um, subtractive, uh, subtractive EQing over here. Just taking out the lows and all that stuff. With the drum bus, I'm again adding a bit of transients to it and just panning it left to right and a utility, that's all. Let's check the other hat. I doubt this is there. So some of the samples uh, you might be able to hear sometimes only because this is more of a chance based uh, thing. So let's check what exactly this is doing. So you can see that there's a small um, pattern over here, which is two bars and a bit more. So I just wanted to keep this a bit polyrhythmic. And every time it hits, it's going to hit a random sample from these transients because there's a random chance. And I did this with the help of slice. So you can see that this sample has hit this time and let's wait for a while and check if something else hits yep so that hit so it's a very random kind of thing anything can hit uh, amongst these three uh, markers which are on the um sam simpler right then we have the eq a bit of dealing and utility and finally, a last, a very textural kind of wooden sample, which is, which sounded like this. A bit of uh, saturation with the help of Saturn 2 and EQing, taking out the lows and a bit of the highs as well. And also, I've filtered this down from here and added a bit of resonance also on top right so this is how it sounds with my kick and bass right also there is a Valhalla plate on one of the return channels so you can see these scents which are A I just have a single scent that is going to the Valhalla plate. Right. So that's that. Um, let's jump into the FX section now. So I have this crackling kind of sound, which is like vinyl noise, but yeah, it's a bit different. And it's just an audio file. Another one is here. Now this sounds more like atmosphere, background, it's just a single note and without the effects it, it sounds something like this. 
with the phaser and the flanger on it's just a bit i mean it just moves a bit it has a slight movement to it also an eq just cutting down the low frequencies and all those stuff so these things uh help filling in spaces in my tracks so if i can play these alongside things which i have right so that's that coming up to the basis section now uh let's check it out so i usually work with only wavetable and i try to work with only um stock plugins so that's what i've done over here in this track most of the times you'll see all these things are stock plugins so the bass some, sounds something like this and it's a kind of a 303 ish bass if i take down all the effects using a basic uh, square wave and just a single oscillator and just having a couple of frequency cuts so 150 hertz i've cut down from this part because my sub bass is covering all those parts so i don't really want this to tackle in with that and this can cover up the rest of the parts and with the help of the envelope i'm just controlling the character of the sound and the resonance as well that is on the first filter also the filters are on smp mode and having a 12 24 decibels cut which is like a steeper cut right adding an eq to it so that it doesn't go really high also when i take this frequency up right so let's take it a bit here awesome um other uh, other than that i have another comp uh, delay over here both the times are different so they're just picking most of the highs over here this can happen um right another compressor so that whenever the volume goes like really loud or up uh, it can just compress it down and everything sounds kind of similar to each other and this is side chaining to the kick so let's check it out how it sounds with overall samples Right, so let's leave the base too for now. Uh, that's like the special recipe. <laughs> and let's check these things out. Uh, so the sample has gone offline. Um, this was supposed to be a vocal chop, uh, which has a lot of things going on. So I can't really tell what it is. Uh, but let's try to work around something else, and I'll try to explain what exactly it was. I'll just write for a vocal or something. Break the you stayed away drum zone old school music number one. dj tap drum no number four then <sighs> cut oh, oh. Right. okay let's take one of these samples and try to see what exactly i was doing so the sample which i had was a bit reverse so that you don't really understand like what exactly she's saying or he's saying and if i play this now with my chain so it was something like this like a very atmospheric kind of vocal chant coming from the background Um, if I, or it can be like this as well, 
Right, so, but essentially, what's the chain looking like? I'll just explain to you guys. This is how it sounded in the beginning. So, a couple of uh, resonances I dropped in between because the sample which I actually used was having those um, squeaky kind of noises which ring in your ears. So, I just took them down. Also, a low cut. After which I boosted the highs a bit more so that the presence of the uh, vocals can be felt. An auto filter just uh, so that I can control it anytime I want in my track so that it sometimes it's having a dull feature to it, sometimes it's bright in that sense. A satin too, which adds a bit of flavor to the track. Timeless too is just a delay kind of a delay uh, plug-in by pap filter right valhalla vintage verb now this is the real deal uh, trick uh, wh what i use to make my sounds ethereal you can see there's a long tail to it you can do this with the help of any sort of a reverb but yeah now, after this this adds a lot of new dynamics and color to the sounds so uh, i just took down again uh, the lows having an auto pan and finally a compressor to just you know uh, glue everything off right, so there was this was just an example of uh, what I did with the vocals but it's not really the same vocal so I can't really tell similarly the same thing with the other vocal as well and kind of a similar chain without having uh, the Valhalla vintage verb because this one I wanted to keep a bit dry in uh, nature and that way this can act like as a mono kind of a thing so you can see also where the bass mono feature is on also it's a bit on the left which is going to be mono whereas this one is on the right which is going to be stereo so it just blends in two different things but it's kind of in the same uh, song Right, um, another group which I have is pads. So check, let's check this empty out. If I play this, okay, I'm not sure why this is not playing. Let me just check the auto filter, right? So this is more like a sci fi kind of a high pitched noise. So I can play around this anytime with the help of my filter cutoff. Um, let's turn off everything again and check. So this is how it sounded. And uh, adding an app to this on the lead preset, but the drive it is uh, really low so that it doesn't really hit as it hits. Now an LFO is here, which is controlling the drive it so that it has a movement. Right. EQ, which just cuts down the lows. Auto filter, like we saw, it's just doing its thing, having uh, the sample being a bit dull or like bright sounding. A reverb with like a Kind of a normal tail of five seconds having a drive rate of 33 percent an auto pan and finally a compressor right so now this goes along with my pads which are the essence of the track which it derives and puts up the feel so this is how it looks like i don't like really repeating kind of a pad uh, pattern because it sounds very boring and monotonous right so let's hear it So those are my pads, 
really long tail. Let's take that down for now. All right, so now my pads are a chain of three different things. The first is this pad. This is again made in a wave table. Now to make pads, I don't really use these uh, um, categories. I just add some sound of my own and try to work around it and see because that way I can uh, experiment with some new wave tables and I can find some new ideas and sounds if I uh, am working on a track. So I like to keep pads as one of my um, best things in the track. So that's why I focus a lot more on that. Right, so let's just close this for now. Uh, all the effects. Here's how it sounds. Let's take the second one. Now this is more of a resonant kind of a pad. And finally the third thing is just a noise. Which is like really stretched out. Now, why is that done? Is when I'm playing this and opening the filter, I want this to be heard, uh, not really heard when it's not. Uh, I mean, if it's dull, it's not really heard, but when it's fully opened, it should be heard. Right, so that's that. And this is the chain of things. Now, again, I have a user based wavetable having two oscillators with two different wavetables. And a couple of modulations on the pitch to make it sound a bit more organic. Uh, it has a movement. Um, over here, it's nothing really. All these fre frequency knobs for all these three things. Over here, it's the from the control section, this frequency. So all these three are going to the macro one so that I can control the dynamics of this. Right, so the next thing is the Valhalla Vintage Verb. Then comes the EQ, cutting down the lows. Another EQ, which is just a mid-side EQ, so that I can tame the frequencies uh, even better. On the mids, you can see I have, uh, have I'm, I'm not really having any sort of a low, low side, but on the sides, the highs are kind of brightened up. And in the mids, the mids are brightened up, if that makes sense. And the auto pan is there, just adds a bit of movement. Finally, a compressor. And that's about it for this track, these many things. Also, there's a bass, which I was talking about. So this is having a sampler. And if I play this, this totally depends on this auto filter. So this is how it sounds and a couple of different things. I'm having an FM modulation happening over here on this sample and yeah, I guess that's about it um, for the LFO which is controlling something over here in this uh, let me just check it out i'm not sure if it's mapped but it was mapped to something i don't know how it just got out let's just put it on the volume i guess not really just going to do a undo Okay, cool. So this uh, LFO, let's dump it for now. I guess I've put it for no reason. The OTT really helps blend, uh, make my 
sample sound like how I exactly want it to sound like. So let's turn everything off and see how it sounded before even having that. This was the actual sample. And turning it into that uh, aggressive kind of a mid bass, let's check. So OTT adds more color to this. Then comes the drum bus, which I use to make it even more aggressive. An EQ which is cutting down the lows. The auto filter. Now this auto filter is having a shaper to it, which is shaping the low pass. And the delay and well I'll update after this so that uh, it kind of goes out. I guess the reverb is a bit too much. But as I said, this is still in the process of um, being done as a creative part. After which, in the final thing, I have another EQ and a compressor before that um, so that it just stays um, balanced in the place where I want it to be. Does it go here or right there? And this auto filter controls the overall brightness and dullness. Like I said, I just keep one ready. So that can be done. Awesome. So that's about it for the track. And when I play this all together, I have like a slight small arrangement done over here. So still uh, a lot of noises and all those things are uh, to be <clears throat> placed in the track as well as those vocals which I'm not able to show you today because they just um, not here right but let's listen from this part of the track maybe I guess about it for this track and how I do my sound design and the tracks um, yep so I guess I hope I learn you guys learned something today and this track will be out soon that's about it see you next time thank you <laughs>